Do you like samurai? Do you like guns? How about samurai with guns? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then you'll probably be interested in Rise of Ronin. I've been looking for an excuse to make a video on the game, as there's been a lot of information already revealed. But this past week, we had a bunch of previews and loads of different creators, news were talking about the game. So let's discuss everything about Rise of Ronin and why it's not exactly the game you think it is. Rise of Ronin is a third-person action RPG from Team Ninja. If you're unfamiliar with their last few entries, they worked on Neo and Neo 2, with Wulong Fallen Dynasty coming out just last year, but they are more popularly known for the Ninja Gaiden series. In Rise of Ronin, Team Ninja is looking forward to making a more action-focused game, as the previous titles that they've worked on were more Souls-like in nature, more notably Neo 1 and Neo 2. Fluid combat, an open world instead of a more linear design, and all of this is nicely slotted into the Bakumatsu period of Japanese history. I'm immediately invested in this game because 1. Samurais, duh, and 2. The game seems to be challenging this early 2000s feel such as games like Onimusha if you've ever heard of that game before and obviously Ninja Gaiden. Previews have also mentioned that there's a lot of blending of genres here with Assassin's Creed referenced, Neo, and kind of the speed and rhythm of a hack and slash game. You start out Rise of Ronin with the character creator, picking from a variety of different options, and you also get to create two characters being your twin. The story will focus on these two characters being the Blade Twins, i.e. you and your sibling, and their village being destroyed. This then ultimately leaves you like stranded with no parents or anything like that, and you get taken in by the Veiled Edge. They train you and turn you into Ronin assassins, wouldn't you know? Being that the story is based in the Bakumatsu period in Japanese history, it's going to be a very interesting time period because there's a lot of internal fights within Japan, such as the shogunate having backwards and forwards, like different factions going up one against one another. There's also the westerners from the black ships that are going to be invading the borders and trying to influence Japanese culture and the way that they do things because for the longest period of time before this game, when it's actually set, Japan was a more isolationist country, which means they shut themselves off to the outside world. The thing that interests me the most about this time period is the variety of different historical figures that we're going to get to see. As the player being in this period, you're going to be dealing with all these factions, so your choices will matter at various story points. Main quests and side quests can also play a key part in your journey, but one of the examples that they've given in a lot of previews is sparing a specific character at the end of a quest line only to have them show up later on, causing more trouble, but then eventually you'll actually be able to recruit them to your team to help you later in battle. Talk more about that in just a moment. There are supposed to be a few of these throughout the game, so it means that interacting with these characters and your choices that you make will ultimately affect gameplay, so that's nice to see. Here is where Rise of Ronin isn't the game that you think it is. Combat and gameplay is going to be quite mixed up and evolved from what you've seen before. They mainly focused on the action Souls-like genre for a period of time, especially with Neo 1 and with Neo 2. I haven't played Wo Long, so I can't uh, give too much on that. But from everything I've watched and read, it's heavily like rhythm action focused. There's definitely a heavier play on different animations and cool move sets this time around. And it's a lot of fast paced stuff with a variety of weapons and things that we're going to be able to use. Think about this game having elements of like a Souls-like but more like Sekiro and Dark Souls, but a little bit lighter, similar to like Jedi Fallen Order or Jedi Survivor, that type of game. They're not overly brutal, but there's going to be a lot of flair that you can use there. And that flair is great, especially when there's over 10 different weapons and some real cool things that you can do across the game. There are your real staples here for Japanese fighting styles, such as katanas. You can duel katanas as well. There's also a bow and arrow. Then there's the uh, naginata, which is the long staff weapon that has a blade on the end. There is a variation of the katana being the odechi, and this is like a huge sword that you'd be able to do some cool things with. There is the Yari, which is a spear-like weapon with a blade on the end as well, similar to the Naginata, except this is more of a pointed blade rather than a slicing blade. There is a Japanese long sword. There's also going to be throwing knives and things that you can be using around the environment. And oh yeah, that little thing, guns. 
being that the time period that it's in, we're going to have some early firearms on display. There's going to be a bayonet that you can actually use like a bayonet as a bladed weapon and then use that in combination with its movesets to fire it with the musket element of the gun, whether or not this goes into actually using a musket as a ranged weapon. Obviously, we've just mentioned, there you go, you're going to have a musket as well. There's also a revolver that you're going to be able to use as well, and it just looks super badass when you pull out a revolver and you have a katana in your hand. I don't know, it just it satisfies the monkey brain in me. Besides their own unique movesets that each weapon was going to have, you will also be able to use martial skills. These are basically special moves that you're going to be able to use with each weapon. And there's a grapple hook as well. A cheeky little grapple hook. Come on, what you know what you're going to use a grapple hook for? Pulling enemies, swinging around, doing traversal-based stuff. The combat that I've seen from all of the things is going to be very much like a parry encounter system, but there's also the light souls-like elements where you have the lock on and you're fighting a group of enemies. So there is that DNA that they've had from the other games as well. From all the gameplay I've seen, it doesn't feel very methodical and very deliberate as you would in a Souls-like game. So that's the key difference here. And the other key difference, which is something that I wasn't expecting here, is that there's going to be difficulty levels this time. In the last couple of games, there hasn't really been any difficulty settings because they've been brutal in the Souls-like game. But this is a more open world orientated game. And there's three difficulties. There's Dawn, which is easy. There's Dusk, which is normal. And then there's Twilight, which is hard. Having these options may actually sway a couple of people over because that's the biggest turnoff point of Souls-like games is that these really brutal difficulties and this is being more action focused will mean a lot of people will be able to jump in and maybe experience this game that they may have not they may have not been interested to begin with so this is going to be something that I think is very good weird side point but a lot of people get really wrapped up in the whole difficulty options of a game whether or not it should have a difficulty or it shouldn't as long as the game is approachable and they have these things so more people can play then it doesn't really make a difference and that's where i kind of stand on things so rise of ronin having difficulty options is good now you know about the combat you're probably going to be asking what we're actually going to be doing in the game outside of combat the open world is going to be this area that you go and explore. It starts off quite linear from the previews we've seen and then goes into this big open world. There's going to be a lot of different towns and settlements, some side quests, main quests, the typical open world stuff, bandit camps thrown around, that type of thing. And I can't really like judge the world until I'm actually in there and kind of say this is what it's the same as like maybe a Ubisoft game or an Assa another Assassin's Creed the same thing or like Ghost of Tsushima that type of deal but the thing that I like about the open world is that it's going to be this blend of Japanese uh, architecture that's going to be strewn around the entire map but then there's also the western buildings and the western influences as well so the more uh, modernized like industrial type of buildings that we get to see I like that and a lot of the things that I'm hearing from the previews, having like the glider to be able to fly around, climbing around the different buildings. Stealth will be a big way that you engage with some of these activities, these towns and uh, bandit camps. So I see a lot of players doing that, including myself. And there's also a lot of mini games that you're going to be able to find around the world. There was like this Gatling one, this firing range. There was actually like a glider one that I saw some snippets of, which is pretty cool. So there's a couple more of those alongside petting cats. Then I think this game is going to be a winner for a couple of people just for those things alone. A neat thing that I did learn from a lot of the previews is the companion system or bond system within the game. It plays into a lot of different activities, but mainly into these things called battle missions. Not too much has been shown and the details haven't been revealed too much as far of what I've seen, but you'll be able to go up against some rival factions, as I previously mentioned, and having these people on your team, these companions, that you'll actually be able to switch to in combat. So it gives you a little bit of an assistance and having the ability to do that may influence some battles that you have or some bosses that you come up against if there's going to be bosses within these types of uh, missions. And it could provide for some interesting gameplay options. From what I've seen, there is the different stats that each character will have have that you can have and you can build up this bond system that might make them stronger or have different abilities that they unlock i don't know that's just me kind of speculating i saw a few complaints online talking about the game's graphics and to me i don't really see what they're on about it looks pretty good and 
there was a comparison to like ps3 era games and i'm like i don't see it and anytime that we talk about games with the super high graphics and they don't have things such as a performance mode which rise of ronin does have reason allows you to get 60 fps and have that smooth gameplay experience there's a graphical mode for people that want to take in the best options and there's a third mode as well which removes ray tracing so it's going to be maybe a blend between performance and graphical i don't know i'll have to check them out when i get in my hands on the full release of the game rise of ronin looks and sounds way different than i expected the previews on the whole have been pretty good and a lot of them are unhappy that they couldn't play more of the game they only got maybe like two and a half hours worth of a uh, story like getting into the game they couldn't explore as much of the open world as they wanted to i like what i'm seeing and the sucky thing about this is it's releasing the exact same day as dragon dogma 2 which is unfortunately makes this game going to be missed by a few people or the other way around people might miss dragon's dogma in favor of this but right now the hype train for that game is most likely going to overshadow this one so i'm just shedding some light on it because i will be playing this uh, definitely on launch and i'll get my review up as soon as i can and i'm really excited now for the 22nd of march now i've learned a whole lot more about the game i really really want to get into it and see how the different systems and i've played neo and i played neo 2 a little bit but not enough to really give a lot of statements on the game i have however played a good couple of hours of ninja gaiden and if it's anywhere that type of fast pacedness with the combat then i think team ninja are going to absolutely smash it here and i'm very excited for the 22nd of march when this game launches well, what are your thoughts down in the comments section i want to know what you think of rise of ronin what are you getting dragon's dogma 2 rise of ronin or are you completely missing them both i'd love to have that discussion down in the comments section and as always if this video has been helpful leave a like on it subscribe if you're new and as always this has been it's jimbo and i'll see you guys next time